And so people have been talking about full duplex communication for a number of years now, but it was a big part of one of the demos today. So I wanted to ask you what Qualcomm is doing to advance that technology. Yeah, um, full duplex is a very interesting technology, and uh, people have been writing paper about it for almost 20 years, actually. Um, but there is a full duplex for low power transmission, um, like in Wi-Fi or small cell. Um, you the transmitter power is less than one watt or a few hundred milliwatts, and uh, with a couple antennas. The technology we have been showing is a brand new technology. Uh, it's called subband full duplex. So what we did is actually not to transmit and receive on exactly the same uh, frequency, but instead we take a 100 megahertz C-band um, channel and um, do an in-band partition of transmit and receive. And um, in this case, what we have is um, you know, 20 megahertz transmission um, uplink and uh, you know, 80 megahertz of uh, downlink right next to each other with almost zero guard band. So what it does to us is that um, it actually, instead of um, um, require you to cancel out the uh, principal component, you only need to cancel out the spurious part um, of the uh, self-jamming. So that allows us to increase transmit power by almost 40 to 50 dB. So what that does is bring the full duplex capability from a small cell to a massive mammal base station. So today what you saw is like a, a kilometer type of uh, coverage um, you know, with more than 60 dBm of uh, EARP. So really, it's a, now it's a macro cell technology. What they allow us to do is also to reduce uh, latency because they're no longer downlink, uplink, TDMing. You don't have to wait for the other uh, side to finish. You can transmit simultaneously. Also, it increased the uh, range because now the receiver, typical cellular network, the mobile is very low power. That's typically the weakest link. So in typical TDD system, if 20% uplink, then you can only use 20% of the power. So this now allows you to use 100% of the power. So that really increases the range and reduces the latency. It's a new breed of technology for 5G advanced and 6G. OK, so what about GigaMimo? What is that? And is this a 5G advanced thing? Is it a 6G thing? Where does that fit in in the timeline? GigaMimo is a, a, you know, it's a really uh, enabling technology for us to tackle even higher frequency for wide area coverage. What we're looking at is for 5G advanced or 6G, if we want new spectrum for this wide area coverage and co-site with the current 5G, where should we go? So one of the interesting band is um, between, I, say, we call, I call it XKU band. Um, Basically, it's uh, between you know, 7 gigahertz and roughly uh, 16 gigahertz you know, in that range. Um, you could actually um, increase the range and uh, compensate for these higher propagation loss by um, you know, having an order magnitude more antenna elements. For example, uh, instead of 256 elements, uh, today in the simulation you saw, uh, we have uh, 4K elements. So, the, but the array size is pretty much the same. So with the same array, array size, much higher density um, of antenna elements, we are able to compensate for the additional pass loss. And now we have a system that gave you, uh, in terms of bandwidth, for example, 500 megahertz, coupled with this uh, massive um, you know, um, spatial multiplexing capability, will give you roughly 10 times the performance uh, compared to a C-band 100 megahertz. So for my last question, I wanted to ask you what the role of AI in 5G advanced air interfaces is. Um, very good question. Um, we just defined uh, the research topics for 5G advanced in 3GPP, and uh, machine learning AI is a big one out there. One of the key concepts we are bringing out is uh, this thing called uh, cross-node machine learning. So, Instead of just having a smart neural network implementation of what's in the spec, we're going to make the spec also dynamic. What that means is uh, we can replace some fixed techniques, um, fixed protocol, with a dynamic neural network defined protocol. What that allows us to do is to, first of all, customize um, these um, um, protocols 
according to the particular scenarios, particular um, situation. Also, it will allow us to accelerate the technology advancement. Um, so instead of waiting for one release after another release, which typically a couple years apart, now if there's a new neural network out there, we could actually update them right away. So an uh, info vendor and uh, OEM, they can agree, say, oh, let's both update the uh, neural network. Yeah, Ting Feng, thank you so much for diving deeper into some of the demos that I saw earlier. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.